Assalamualaikum to Madam and my fellow friends. So we are going to present our proposal for a two-story residential house precast building project. So I am Fasiha Anissa binti Muhammad Anwar, then I will be the first presenter for this presentation. First is the types of precast concrete system used for this uh, double story house that we propose that are available in Malaysia. The types that we choose is panel system because there are a few types of structure building system that are used that are being used in Malaysia that is conventional, cast in situ, prefabricated and composite system. So there are three types is panel system, frame system and block system for precast uh, pre type structure. So we choose panel system for our building. Next. Panel system is the most preferred building sorry, sorry. in in Malaysia because it is one of the most progressive industrial types of structural and elements. It is used in modern construction such as building houses, public buildings, and also industrial buildings. It reduces construction time as well as a decrease in labor expenditures. Completely finished form, it is ready to paint surfaces with windows and doors, and also the piping for wiring. It was designed in single layer solid or multi layer sandwich. For this, uh, for this residential house building, we choose single layer solid because our climate in Malaysia is not suitable for the multi layer sandwich type panel system. Next is the types of structural elements for beams that we propose that is for the internal beam we choose rectangular and in inverted T type where the floor loading is approximately symmetrical. So some of the some part of the structure use rectangular and the middle one use in inverted T. And for the external beams, l shape edge beams was chosen, where floor loading is predom predominantly non-symmetrical. For the columns, we choose two tire tall columns with corbels. For the edge columns, it is the one that is symmetrical in one direction. For the internal columns, it is the symmetrical in all directions, while the corner columns is not symmetrical at all, where all of it have corbels. Next, for the solid, for the solid flat slab, we propose it on the porch floor, porch roof deck. So we choose the solid slab for easy maintenance and for a better look on the porch. That is all for me. Okay. <laughs> um. Hi everyone. My name is Anis. So we proceed for the next slide, which is uh, about the flooring system. And precast slabs, uh, or known as precast slabs, that is, uh, include the pre-stressed concrete. And all of these elements are precast in factory. So the options we have is uh, the hollow core slab, double C slab, and also solid concrete slab. So the next slide is uh, a bit about the hollow core slab. 
So the hollow core slab uh, has no slum or cold as dry cast concrete when produced. Thus, it is not recommended to use for exterior where it will get too exposed for, uh, to the extreme weather. And also the hollow section can be used uh, for cooling, heating ducts, and also chases for electrical wiring. And it is very good for reducing the sound transmission and also vibrations between floors. And also the continuous hollow core reduces cost and weight of the slab. So next slide is about the double T slab where it's produced on a long line casting with length of uh, 100 meter up to 150 meters. It can withstand corrosion and also resistant to moisture, which is ideal for parking garage, um, commercial buildings, industrial buildings, sewage, water treatment plant, and many more. And it is also a pre-stressed concrete where it can carry heavy loads and reduce flow height. And same, the same as the hollow core slab, it is also very good in sound transmission. All right, so proceed with the solid concrete slab. Mm -hmm. The pre-stress, it is also the pre-stress uh, concrete with tension steel reinforcement and it conduit opening or wiring can be previously installed in the solid slab in the pre-cut plant. And it is also not required of plastic work, which it has most uh, form work that produce high surface quality. Okay, for the next slide is the system that we chose for this uh, two-story residential house precast building project is the hollow core slab, where it is um, chosen because it can cover a very large area in a single span, and also because it is very good in sound resistance and noise transfer. Also, the hollow core slab is a very, uh, very high, a very uh, high speed in erosion and simpler to use, better in design, good precision quality, and the design can readily accommodate pipe, conduit, electrical wiring because of its hollow core and better thermal insulation that is needed in energy efficiency. And the next slide. We proceed with the types of connections between structures where the connection is the place where there are high stress concentration and also weak points in the structural system. Uh, it is very essential aspect that should be considered in the precast concrete structures. The type that uh, of connection that we're going to choose is from beam to beam, beam to column and set beam. So the next slide is the beam to beam connection. The chosen method is connecting road or high quality full road made at both ends and connected to a connecting road or the high quality full road because it can transfer a large vertical force and horizontal force and a quantity of moment may be transferred if the connecting road is placed at the top and bottom of the beam. Next is beam to beam, uh, beam to column connection. So beam to column connection is a simple uh, connection. Uh, for the simple connection between beam to column is just place the beam on top of a column, but it is not suitable for two or more story building. So for this project, the connection chosen is NIP support that is much more ideal and better in structure stability. The reinforced concrete nib is a short cantilever protection from column to provide support for beams. Last but not least is slab to beam connections where the tie bar is used. Short strength, a uh, short length tie bars anchored by bonding into open core of hollow core floor unit distributed evenly for four ties. The pull up force from the tie bars that are cast into the concrete hollow core is where the connection relies to. And that is all for my part. Thank you. Thank you, Anis. Um, hi, my name is Iman Haris bin Zaham. Now I will continue this presentation on question five, which is what construction method to be used in this project in terms of lifting procedure. 
the lifting procedure is important because it is a knowledge about what safety precautions should be taken during the assembly of elements during construction and the transport of elements to the construction site. Based from what we have presented earlier in this video, the main structural elements of this project is beams, columns and slab. For slab and columns, first we need to ensure that the pillars or the elements which they should support are supported or permanently cast or are supported and the concrete has the necess necessary strength. Second, the crane should be able to bear the beams or support until they are swung into place. Third, tall cylinder beams each must be must be bigger than four times width or L and it also must be bigger than 60 times with width. And soft movable support, neoprene or similar, are necessary to secure against dipping over before the uncoupling. And finally, the centricity loaded beams are to be marked as special elements and secure for tipping over. Okay, now we are going to talk about the slab. The base of the supporting structure must be molded and hardened or the, or the necessary load bearing capacity must be ensured by other means. The first ceiling element should be positioned from a leaf, a ladder or from the scaffolding. The subsequent elements should be positioned from the last assembled ceiling element. A rail and a security sling should be attached along one side at the ends of the element, as you can see from the diagram at the side of this slide. Holes in the ceiling should be always be covered as quickly as possible. If two or more parts have to be mounted side by side, the parts must be mounted parallel to each other. Okay, thank you Iman. Now let's proceed to the next section. My name is Nofarajki Minta Abdrahim and I will present on cost benefit of precast concrete construction in comparison to cast in situ cons construction. There are positive and negative aspects in this topic. First, let's take a look on the positive aspect for both precast and in situ concrete. First, the precast concrete have minimal construction waste due to members that has been fabricated in factory compared to in situ concrete where cost material is much cheaper than precast concrete due to manually fabricated inside. Next, less labor required as the machine will assemble all components of precast concrete. However, for in situ concrete, it does not require specialized tensioning equipment. Besides, construction cost for precast concrete is much cheaper for larger structure, whereby for the in situ concrete, the construction cost cheaper for small structure. Other than that, precast concrete has thinner section, results in less safe weight and contribute to economical construction. However, in situ concrete does not require additional transportation cost compared to precast as the material was transport by lorry. And the last point for the positive aspect is precast concrete required low maintenance as precast precast as precast concrete interiors are less susceptible to damage and more conven conveniently. Whereby for in situ concrete it does not require extreme and particular supervision. Next, for the negative aspect, first, the precast concrete required high initial investment due to large amount of resource required to set up precast concrete plan. However, for in situ concrete, it contributes to huge amount of construction waste due to all works done on site. Besides, pre-stressed concrete required uh, specialized tensioning equipment and device which are more cost, very costly and 
for the in situ concrete, it require additional cost regarding the formwork before casting the concrete. Other than that, Precast concrete construction require very good quality control and supervision which lead to more cost to higher experienced worker as well as in situ concrete that require more labors to do work such as laying brick, preparing form work and reinforcement. Moreover, the precast concrete require high transportation costs as the precast members need to transport by trailer. And for the in-situ concrete, it has la larger section and safe weight due to additional concrete and, and reinforcement required to precast concrete. Lastly, the cost for material use in pre-stress is very high whereby the cost of tensile steel is about three times costlier than the mic steel. Even though the cost of in situ concrete is lower, it but it required more time for completion. For example, due to the bad weather condition, it may lead to LAD. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I am Fatin Natasha Binti Ruslan. Uh, I, I will proceed to how precast concrete work could con contribute to the sustainable construction that benefit to the environment. Uh, first, it, uh, the waste minimization, less material uses inside, less dust, precast space from material waste control is environment at workplace. First point, waste minimization. By using precast in the construction work, the factory environment significantly minimizes waste. This also includes waste from unnecessary construction, from wood, embracing, packaging, and debris that accumulate on cast in situ. Second, the material, the material usage inside will be decreased. Pro um, properly construct because structures but are uh, smaller in size and use less material that product built on site. It's ensure that less resources to be harvested from the environment and less unused when the life cycle of the building is over. Then, uh, uh, the site condition will be less dust, it will be safer for workers who are protected by ventilation and personal protective equipment such as device. After that, the precast also based on from waste material. Precast manufacturing companies recycle waste material that where is there is leads to less materials being sent to landfill. Lastly, uh, it will control environment at workplace. The workplace environment for factory workers is healthier than those working on the construction site. External shop environments have regulated condition for coping with air quality, noise, and health hazard. That's all from us. Thank you.